Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to the TikTok workshop. Today, we're going to get back inside this little clock. So to pass the BHI exams, not only do we have to learn all of the parts, but we have to learn all of the parts that make up the parts. So today we're going to take a crack at learning some of the fundamentals and seeing how the components work together. But before we do that, let's get everything apart again. So this is the basic layout of the clock and we're going to break things down step by step. We start off with the powerhouse of the clock, the mainspring. When wound, a spring stores energy and releases it as torque, a turning force. This one is knackered, it should have way more boing in it so it's going to end up getting replaced in the future. The spring is attached to this spindle called an arbor. At this end of the arbor you can see the threading for winding the key. And on the other end, we can see all of the parts that make up the ratchet mechanism. This allows you to wind up the spring. That mechanism then drives the great wheel. When talking about clocks, if a gear has more than 20 teeth, it's generally called a wheel. And if it has less than that, it's called a pinion and its teeth are then called leaves. There are exceptions, however, but we'll deal with them as we come across them in the future. The great wheel then drives the centre pinion, which is connected to the centre wheel. The centre wheel turns at once per hour and funnily enough is located in the centre of the clock. The centre wheel drives the third wheel pinion and the third wheel drives the fourth wheel pinion. The fourth wheel normally rotates once per minute, so in many clocks and watches it carries the second hand. Those previous four wheels make up the train and they convert the high torque, low number of turns that we have at the spring to a low torque, high number of turns. We're also able to grab the time from the train as long as the speed of everything can be kept constant. So the main spring has a lot of power in it and if we were to let it go in one lump it would spin away very quickly. So speed control is the job of the escapement and the oscillator. This clock has an escapement made up of this guy with the funky teeth, the escape wheel, one of the wheels that can have less than 20 teeth but still be considered a wheel, and this fork looking thing, the pallets. The escapement has two jobs, to let the train out in small controlled steps and to provide a little push for the oscillator. This little nudge is caused by the pallets moving along the slope face of the escape wheel teeth. That push is transferred through to the oscillator and in this clock the oscillator is a balance wheel. The main job of the oscillator is to go back and forth at a constant rate. The balance is made up of this toothless wheel right here with a spring on one side designed to expand and contract evenly and a pin on the other. This is where the wheel receives its little push. So I've slowed things down here so you can see what's going on. The pin on the balance wheel is engaging with the slot in the end of the pallet. So when it gets roughly to its halfway point, it's given a push, or impulse as it's properly called, and this keeps the balance oscillating. Absolutely hypnotic, isn't it? I could watch one of these for hours. A pendulum clock works in a similar way. Here I've got the vocal pendulum clock that I made in a previous episode. We can see that we've got an escape wheel, pallets, and our oscillator, the pendulum. Absolutely the same thing going on here. The escapement is letting everything move in small steps and is giving a little push to the pendulum which is swinging at a constant rate. 
Right, we've covered power, torque reduction and speed control. Let's go back up to the centre wheel and finish things up by showing you how the time indication works. OK, we've already learned that the centre wheel is turning once per hour. In this hole in the middle of the centre wheel lives the centre arbour. The centre arbour has the minute hand on one end and the little windy knob for adjusting the time on the other. We need a way of being able to adjust the time without moving all of the other gears in the clock. So let's see how this arbour is connected to the centre wheel. So we here we can see how this centre wheel assembly goes together. So we've got a washer at the bottom. We've got this spring washer here. We've got the centre wheel next, another washer, and then this bushing here. I'm going to drive down to push the centre wheel against this spring. And what that will do is it will give us a drive between the centre wheel and this centre arbour. But when we need to, we can twist this rod at the back, break that friction connection, and that will enable us to be able to change the time at the front here. You'll see it better when it all starts to go back together again. But for now, I need to drive this bushing down. So I'm going to see if I can find a way of doing that. So here we go. The only thing I could find to uh, try to tap this down with was uh, a, this old pen. So I've taken the, the uh, nib out and hopefully with a bit of a tap, I should be able to seat this bushing. So the centre arbour passes through the plate and is attached to the cannon pinion. This pinion doesn't slip and will always move when the centre arbour moves. Next we have the minute wheel, which neither indicates minutes nor turns at once per minute. And finally, we have the hour wheel, a properly named component which slides over the centre arbour and carries the hour hand. So this is how all of this goes together. So we put the centre wheel, which is this one at the back, back in. That's attached through the centre arbour to the cannon wheel here. The All of this is turning once per hour. That then turns the minute wheel here and finally the minute wheel turns the hour wheel and we can see how all of that works together. And as you can see here if I stop that very rear centre wheel from turning we can still change the time. So there we have it, that's the basic function of the clock, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. To try and convey the variety of clocks and watches in one episode is a futile endeavour. So if you fancy seeing how a person takes themselves from watching a few YouTube videos to becoming a clock and watchmaker, stick around for my next episode where I attempt my first ever practical exercise for the BHI distance learning course, making a set of hand levers. We're going to reassemble this clock for now. But the next time we open it up, we're going to learn a few more names for things and look at some of the wear and damage this clock has sustained over its lifetime. If you want a more detailed explanation of how clocks work, head over to the BHI website where you can find the first lesson of the distance learning course that I'm taking, link in the description. Okay, thank you very much for watching. You all know the buttons you need to click to help me out. Look after yourselves and go and get your hands dirty. Do 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 do